So firstly, this is nothing new. And why to a degree is this nothing new? Well, it's because from, from the Greeks, from the Romans, from the Egyptians, from, from the Bible, we have all these stories. Uh, and they're, they're almost they're passed down like a, like a baton of rolled scroll from generation to generation. And through time, through time they endure. And they're not just stories. They're, uh, they're the foundations of our faith. They're um, the building blocks on which society remains civilized and keeps on the right tracks. They're, they're message carriers, if you like, wrapped in all sorts of meanings to give us understanding into how we see the world, see our potential in, our wo- in the world, uh, and gain some sort of meaning and understanding. Um, you know, Icarus, uh, flying too close to the sun, uh, a story about our relationship really uh, with technology and how we should be a better judge of our own potential limitations. Uh, Sisyphus and his boulder, um, you know, a, t- a t- punishment, uh, eternal futility for chronic deceitfulness. Uh, Prometheus and the gift of fire, a punishment for actually being uh, over generous and, his, you know, and, and for giving fire to, to mankind, but potentially also it's a story really about betrayal. Uh, Pandora and her box, um, Moses returning from Mount Sinai um, with, with ten tablets of wise instruction, uh, a Greek SWAT team uh, snuggled cozily inside a Trojan horse, rolled blindly into Troy, their, their epic success many years later culminating in the naming of a brand of condom. Uh, and I think the point I'm really trying to make here is that for all this conversation and all this debate around brands needing to tell more stories, actually brands are doing that pretty well already. There's this terrific quote uh, from uh, a British poet uh, called Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold was also the brother of Thomas Arnold, who was the pretty famous uh, headmaster of rugby school. Just a little bit of parenthesis and backstory there as well. And Matthew Arnold had this to say, uh, to know the best that is known and thought in the world and by making this known to create true and fresh ideas, to know that which is known, all the cool stuff, um, and by making it known, consider how to put it together. What Matthew Arnold's really doing here is talking about almost a a kind of a a source code for originality, how you can bring things together in a new and interesting way. And that's what brands do, or at least that's what they try and do. They take the familiar and they they look to reinvent it. They they look to join the dots, existing dots. For want of almost a bit of a metaphor, It's almost like a constellation or a star chart. Um, Brands look to culture, pop culture, history, and they join the dots to try and create form and shape uh, and meaning and reason where formerly uh, they may not have had any um, in order to slipstream these kind of visual terms, these verbal terms, uh, and as a consequence, uh, drive our own sense of familiarity with them and our sense of want for them. Come a couple of uh, classical and quickfire examples. Apple. This is what uh, former Apple employee Jean-Louis Gassi had to say about his company's uh, bite-afflicted fruit motif. Uh, one of the deep mysteries to me is our logo, the symbol of lust and knowledge, bitten into, all crossed with the colours of the rainbow in the wrong order. You couldn't dream of a more appropriate logo. Lust, knowledge, hope, anarchy. These are some very deep-seated associations that, that you know, Apple, through its motif of the, of the Apple, Apple logo, are really playing around with. Uh, anarchy is also why the L in Google is green. Uh, Ruth Ketter of Google. There are a lot of different colour iterations, but we ended up with the primary colours. Uh, and instead of having the pattern go in order, we put a secondary colour on the L, uh, which brought back the idea that Google doesn't follow all the rules. Now, you might be thinking of those crazy kids at Google for making their L green. Um, it's a bit oblique, um, it's a bit opaque. But I like the fact that there is a rationale to it. I like the fact that there is, a, there is an underlying backstory. Uh, when Hyundai launched their premium uh, luxury brand, they, um, they drew on the first book of the Bible for their range of the Genesis. When, when VW launched their premium luxury brand, um, they called it Phaeton. Now, Phaeton means shining. Uh, but Phaeton was also the son of Helios. Helios was the sun god, and, and actually the story goes that, that Phaeton borrowed Helios, his father's sun chariot, lost control of the reins, started to veer too close to earth and smote entire continents, and Zeus had to shoot him out of the sky with a lightning bolt. Um, so, with a slight sprinkling of irony, VW have also named their luxury brand after a joyriding teenager. Uh, but at the same time, it also means shining. A little more irony, if you live in the US, you can stream music from the website Pandora. If you live outside the US, you get greeted with this front page uh, saying that because of licensing constraints, we apologize, but you can't stream music. The lawyers have no problem actually keeping a lid on Pandora. Uh, For the 
branding of movie studios, the manufacturers of storytelling. We have, we have mythical creatures and mythical kingdoms, winged horses uh, and, uh, and magical scapes. For a global coffee shop, we have uh, associations with a, with a topless, twin-tailed siren who was known to enchant sailors to their watery end. Uh, for an Italian fashion house, we have associations with a snake-headed lady with a stony stare. And the point is that any set of cultural reference points can be reworked, reinvented to take on new meaning from something scary to something actually potentially quite desirable, which is exactly what Matthew Arnold was talking about. Consider very quickly and briefly the, the brand narrative behind Nike. Nike didn't start off as Nike. Nike started off as Blue Ribbon Sports. Then came the swoosh, and then actually six years after the swoosh, they renamed themselves after the Greek goddess of victory. And then ten years after that, Dan Wyden of Wyden and Kennedy uh, infamously told his, his Nike clients, you guys at Nike, you know, you just do it. He said it in an American accent, obviously. Um, but the point is, the point is that um, any story narrative can be reworked in the case of Nike. That's a brand narrative 49 years in the telling um, to make it the brand that we know and feel today.